Well, it turned out to be a nasty day outside today. Unfortunately, after three days in the 80s, it's May, and now we are dealing with cold temperatures, rain, and even snow across the four-state area. So let's go outside. Here is a live shot of Downstream Casino. We have clouds and rain at Downstream, and it looks like uh, this will be the case as we work through the evening hours. And then some areas already mixing with snow, and that will continue to occur as we work through the entire evening and the overnight. Much of the same in Joplin, sitting at 37, so it's dropped three degrees in the past hour. Northwest winds at 21, gusts near 25, humidity sits at about 95%. You can see where the front is, extreme southeastern parts of Missouri. So behind it, everybody cold. Zooming in, we have 38 at another recording station in Joplin, 40 in Neosha, 39 in Lamar, 41 still in Miami. Then you drop to 34, Iola, 36 Independence, 34 in Yates Center. So pretty cold as the back side of this system is rotating through and it's really just gonna sit and spin on us, but you can see the snow building right through, uh, really from Kansas City all the way down through southeastern Kansas. So Kansas City, Royals game, a snow delay in May, which is ridiculous. We have winter weather advisories, sliver of Kansas, southwestern Missouri, everybody else, freeze advisories as uh, temperatures are gonna be near freezing. And you can see the snow kind of building in over the past couple hours as showers continue to increase and will continue to through the overnight hours. So here's 69 Highway. So really from Fort Scott over to Iola, Chanute, Parsons, Cherryville, Independence, all mixing with snow and sleet. And we'll continue to see that transition as we work through the overnight hours tonight due to our upper level low, which is centered right about Springfield. So there's a tight little gradient of cold air and that's gonna produce a heavy band of rain and snow through the overnight hours tonight. 35 by 11 p.m. will continue to drop and it looks like as this snow continues to fill in, if it can come down at a heavy enough clip, we gotta overcome the warm ground, we will see accumulations mainly on the grassy surfaces lasting into the morning hours. And then as we work through the day, mixing back with rain and then eventually probably mainly just all over to rain as we work into the afternoon. But we're gonna see at least snow in most areas through the morning hours. Temperatures only go up to about 40 degrees for afternoon highs. Snowfall amounts, it's tricky because we have to overcome that ground. But I'm gonna say most of us, about one to three inches on the outskirts, about an inch of snow. Again, this has never occurred in this area in May, or maybe I should say, at least on record, we have never received measurable snow in the month of May. So we're actually making history. Fun, isn't it? <laughs> snow tonight, 40 tomorrow, snow and rain, slowly creeping up over the weekend, but not the best of weekends. You know, making history and weather is rarely a good thing. I know, and we seem to do it a lot. We, we have, that's yeah. true. Thanks, Doug. We interrupt well, regular programming to bring you this weather alert. Good evening, uh, meteorologist Doug Hetty here with a severe weather update for the four state area. Of course, uh, we still have our tornado watch. All the counties, most of us in purple, and then numerous severe thunderstorm warnings, parts of Vernon, Barton, and then also uh, Cedar, northern parts of Dade, and also southern parts of St. Clair County. Now Jasper County, northern parts of Newton County, also Cherokee County. And then we can go out to Wilson County, Montgomery County, Elk County, Chautauqua County, tornado warning, still southern parts of Nowata County. Now we did have a tornado warning in the southern half of Cherokee County that has been allowed to expire. We did even have some reports of uh, possible touchdowns near the small town of Therese, but uh, at least that storm has lost enough rotation to not warrant a tornado warning as it passes into the state of Missouri. But it's something we're gonna watch uh, very closely as we head through the rest of the evening hours. Still numerous supercells still popping up. Uh, our tornado threat is still definitely there as we head through the next couple hours. Maybe dropping just a hair now that the sun is beginning to set, but we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. First off, this cell, uh, of course, 
that we have been watching across the region. Uh, right across southeastern parts of Kansas, here's Cherokee County and then northern parts of Ottawa County. This cell is the one that did produce at least some brief touchdowns and really has ha held rotation for about an hour to an hour and a half. The reason it has severe thunderstorm warnings, you can see the curvature here, it has a bow to it. So it's producing winds anywhere upwards to 70 to 75 miles per hour. That's straight line winds. Now, in the Joplin Metro, at times they do sound the sirens for winds at 70 and above. So even though at this time, it's just a severe thunderstorm morning. They may decide to sound the sirens just due to the strength of the straight line winds. Can't guarantee it, but can't say they won't do it. So if you do hear it at this time, it's just a severe thunderstorm warning, but something we'll watch. But you can see that leading edge is now crossing the state line. So very close to Galena and Riverton plowing off towards the east and then extends back right along I-44 and near Miami, but uh, very strong, very gusty winds and also some large hail across the region. We can also head back out the tornado warning. This is southern parts of Nawada County, a little couplet right along the county line. This cell still heading east. We'll have to see what it does as it passes in the northeastern parts of Oklahoma. Still other cells to watch. You can see a severe thunderstorm warning. Southern parts of Wilson County, northern parts of Montgomery County as this cell lifts off towards the north and to the east because they are isolated, so, uh, severe cells. We still have that chance to at least produce um, I guess uh, supercells, I can see a tornado warning just popped. I know that's what Nick is gonna talk about here in one second. So I'm gonna pop him up and let yeah. him give us the latest on our tornado warning in the Joplin Metro. Nick? Nick? Yeah, it just came down the wire, Doug. A new tornado warning for Jasper and Newton counties in addition to a Eastern Cherokee County until 845. This is what the warning says. A line of severe storms capable of producing a tornado located along the line extending 12 miles northwest of Carl Junction, all the way down to Galena and Baxter Springs. And this is now moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. So now we wouldn't be surprised to hear the sirens around Joplin going off. Now, this is all just still, like you said, Doug, radar indicated rotation, but we were curious to see if they were going to reissue a tornado warning, and they have. So this does cover the Joplin Metro. This actually stops just west of Carthage, but along Business 49, down f f uh, really from I-49 westward. That does include like areas like Brooklyn Heights, Webb City, uh, Orinoco, uh, uh, not Carthage, but uh, Carl Junction, Joplin, Galena, and uh, all the way down to, I believe, as maybe as far south as 32nd Street or clipping the parts of northern uh, Newton County. So, and yeah, we just heard that the emergency manager is activating the sirens for that tornado warning. So, everybody in the Joplin Metro and especially west of I 49 needs to be in a safe place right now. Uh, do you have an idea of where the rotation is? Uh, they said it's, it just said it's a line of severe storms capable of producing a tornado. So, they thinking it's turning into more like a maybe a little mini squall line set up where anywhere along that line that's about to cross over the state line, there could be maybe a spin-up tornado along there. I'm going to uh, take a look behind the scenes to see if I can find rotation, but that's the latest I have on that right now. All right, let's get uh, Max Storm pop back up, and we will track back towards the east here. So you can see that curvature on the bow echo there. Our warning right through the Joplin Metro, so a sliver of northern parts of Newton County and then right through Jasper County. So you can see a little curvature right through here. And yeah, we get very common little spin up tornadoes right along the front of those bow echoes. And um, you can see it's crossing right into western parts of Jasper County right at this point in time. Nick. As you hit the nail on the head, and that's what the Weather Service is saying, that around the Joplin Metro, it's more likely to be quick, brief, spin-up, weak tornadoes anywhere along that line as this plows into a western Jasper County. And you can see also on the radar how it has these little curvatures to it. 
those would be the most likely areas that we would get these spin-ups. Storms probably move in 35 to 40 miles per hour. So now you can see, uh, let's, let's get, bring it in tighter here. And we'll get an idea. So now it's already passed through the gust front through Galena. Um, so we're now working on the very west side of the Joplin area. So yeah, definitely something you wanna take precautions with as we can get these little spin up tornadoes at any time. Uh, so our gust front would be out ahead of the main line. So moving right through, um, I would say entering the central part of Joplin and then behind the gust front, that's where we're gonna see these spin up tornadoes. And uh, looking at the tire cam, there yet and just a quick double check from the radar behind the scenes here it looks like it's not going to be an issue once you get south of 32nd right now it looks like the strongest of any rotation that can fire up along the line will be confined to Jasper County but again uh, looks like from 32nd Street on up to the north all the way up to the northern parts of Jasper County that's the area where we need to keep an eye out for brief spin-ups and we've got our tower cam at 7th and Rachel I'm pointing west but we're just seeing a lot of lightning strikes I do not see anything right now was there a certain way you wanted me to pan the camera doug because i can do that right now so you. you're looking we're looking due, due west, west from seventh and range line yeah i mean you're you're looking in a good good area just a lot of lightning right now we'll have to see as that line drives right through the heart of job yeah. so we'll, we'll pop this back up here in a few minutes but uh you can see with the main curvature here out in the front the reason the warning doesn't extend much farther south is because the curvature pulls in back towards Miami. So you usually. A pretty good Thursday for us today, even though we had more clouds and even a random shower across the region, which actually we could use the rain. Unfortunately, most of us didn't get any rain outside today we did see a few pop-up showers across the region but again majority of us stay dry as a cold front passed through the area and that's why we had the clouds today and the temperatures have been dropping really from about mid-afternoon and still until now across the region but prior to that we did warm up up to 89 average highs 84 record high 97 set back in 1956 mild start of 67 degrees during the morning hours and this has been the trend over the past several days it's been hot it's been dry still technically summer look at all the sunshines for the past 10 days until today when we had a few random showers this line right here represents 85 degrees or 84 now our average hot so right after the holiday weekend labor day creeped up above it into the 90s and we've been there ever since. So we've been above our average high for at least the past 10 days and really over about the past 30 days, a good 20 of those 30 days have been above where we should be for this time of the year. It's about time for some changes. Finally, our temperatures are gonna cool down a bit over the next couple days. Right now in Joplin, 73 northeast winds at five, humidity checking in. 76 percent zooming in other live temperatures around the four state area 73 in neosho chatopa 76 71 in iola yates center 70 carthage 72 and you can see this cooler air kind of ushering in across the entire central plains is now our front draped well to our south that northerly air northerly winds just kind of pushing in the cooler air 74 in kansas city down to 61 in north platte and this is going to be the trend all night long we do have the clouds kind of filtering in just not much underneath the clouds even though we had a random shower earlier today most of any leftover showers to our south right along the front the system just does not have much in the way of moisture to work with so we're going to see the clouds over the next few hours eventually we'll start to clear out a little bit later on tonight as temperatures take a dip near 60 degrees when you wake up in the morning. I do think by that time we'll have mostly clear skies, north winds light at about five to 10. We'll warm up through the 60s, 70s, northeast wind at five to 10. Great day tomorrow by noon, 
We'll be up to 72. Look at our high, only 78 degrees. So a great day for us on Friday. 60 tonight, 78 tomorrow. So high school football. We're going to drop back into lower 70s by kickoff. By the fourth quarter, we will be sitting into low to mid 60s. Perfect football weather. 55 tomorrow night, 79 Saturday. Back into the 80s by Sunday with slight chances for rain returning. We need your rain, boy, loving those cooler temperatures. It'll be nice for a football game. Yeah, it looks night. good. Yes, it does.